All right, welcome back everybody. My name's Austin. With almost less than 11 days till Bitcoin's third halving ever, Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin is having a hell of a week. Let's just check out the last seven days. Bitcoin started the week at around 7,500. We topped out a few days ago at 9,400. And right now we're leveling off at around 8,700. That's huge. Now, if that's what Bitcoin could do with 20 days to go to the halving, just think about what Bitcoin could do with less than 10. And for every reason that I listed a few days ago in my The Bitcoin Having 2020 Supply Shock video, this is a huge reminder of what makes Bitcoin valuable long term. But as a smart investor, as an investor that looks at global macroeconomic trends, I want you to be prepared for Bitcoin to crash and for Bitcoin to potentially crash hard. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, I can't see the future, but I'm gonna show you my reasoning. And to be clear, when I say crash hard, I don't mean down to 1K or 2K. I mean, it's not out of the question for us to see a 20, 25, 30% drawdown in the short term. I'm talking about something similar to what we saw a few months ago. It's not out of the question. And all I'm saying is be ready to hodl. There's a lot of new Bitcoiners in the space today. Be ready to hodl. We could potentially see major volatility in the short term, and this is the reason why. This is traditional stocks, the stock market, in the month of April. We saw a hell of a good month for the stock market. In fact, the stock market closed out last month with their best monthly gains since 1987. Since the original Robocop came out in theaters, that's the last time we had this good a month in traditional markets. Now that's a very odd thing to say because right now we have over 30 million people in the United States unemployed. They're not working. Also, by no fault of anybody's but this silent killer, but America's food supply chain is broken right now, meaning there's no demand. There's enormous amounts of food, enormous supply, but there's no demand. And I'm very aware that America, other countries around the world are starting to open themselves up again. America as early as May 1st, so today. But it's a fool's hope, I believe, to think that these jobs will instantly come back. I mean all of them. I mean seeing the demand we saw for employment that we saw three months ago. Our road to recovery, in my opinion, will happen, but it will take time. It'll take time. But looking at this month, looking at today, with the best April for the Dow and the S&P 500 that we've seen, this says 82 years, I think it should say since the 80s, but we've seen at least since 1987. Is the sell in May strategy a smart strategy in this pandemic era? And actually the saying sell in May, go away, is already, it's actually one of the most well-known maxims in the investing world. Now the question is, will this hold true this time as investors face one of the most significant public health crises, crises in history. The reason that investors expect the markets to take a decline in May is because the Wall Street adage actually refers specifically to the six months on, six months off seasonal pattern that people typically see in markets. Because on average, markets tend to underperform from May through the end of October, and then around the Christmas season through January, February, they pump. May has traditionally been that start of the downturn. Now, to be fair, the downturn actually started this year around end of February, March, and it was huge. But this was our April, one of the best Aprils ever. So taking into account everything, with governments opening up their countries again, with America opening up, if the jobs aren't there, if the consumer demand isn't there, and I'm talking about isn't to what it previously was, what we knew the markets to be, how will the next few months look if we had the best April that we've seen since 1987? Nobody can see the future. And to be fair, this is new. We've never seen when we proactively shut down a country and then proactively ask everybody to go back to work. We've never seen that. But if the stock market crashes, expect Bitcoin to crash. Expect Bitcoin to at least dip. And you may be screaming at your screen right now, Austin, they're uncorrelated. Traditional markets are down 11% year to date. Bitcoin's up 5%. It's because of the halving. It's because of Bitcoin's strong fundamentals. Expect Bitcoin to pump, not dump. Well, I'm just speaking in the short term. Just look at this. Let me prove it to you. The crash started, the first little crash of the S&P started around February 20th, lasted until about February 28th. What did Bitcoin do in this time period? This is Bitcoin year to date. This was around, in fact, look up top. Don't look at my arrow, look up top. 
This was around February 20th right here. Stock started to crash. Bitcoin held out for one, two, a few days. And then February 28th, Bitcoin followed. That was the first little crash. The second crash started around March 4th. And let's just go to the first one, March 4th to March 9th. What did Bitcoin do March 4th to March 9th? Here, March 4th, look up top, uh, right here, March 4th, we held out for a couple of days. And then by March 9th, right here, we crashed. And then third example, pretty much the last big crash started around March 10th, March 10th to March 23rd. What did Bitcoin do March 10th to March 23rd? Well, it started right here. This time started right here, look up top. We lasted for about a day, and then obviously we crashed, and we crashed hard. Now, Bitcoin was one of the first to recover, much like gold as a potential hedge against the stock market, we recovered first. But a lesson was learned. When traditional markets go down, they pull down everything with them. Now, I do have major news involving the altcoin EOS, the altcoin Stellar Lumens, the altcoin XRP, so stick around to the entire video. But let me know what you think about this. I guess my point is just HODL. Nobody knows the future. And actually when I made two bullish videos, the Bitcoin halving 2020 explaining what the significance of what the Bitcoin halving means and Bitcoin price pumping, many, many people are asking, okay, Austin, well, well then do I buy Bitcoin before the halving or do I buy it after the halving? Since nobody knows the future, me personally, I like to dollar cost average the whole way, but I'll never tell you what you should do. You make your own decisions. But first piece of news, before we get to Stellar, EOS. EOS IO will process intercompany transactions for clients of Grant Thornton, a major accounting firm with $1.9 billion in annual revenue. So this is being processed by EOS, not Ethereum, not Tron. This huge corporation with $1.9 billion in annual revenue chose EOS. Major U.S. accounting firm Grant Thornton is moving all of its clients' intercompany transactions to the EOS IO network. Basically, they manage money for intercompany transactions, and now they're doing it on the EOS IO blockchain. But why did they choose EOS? A company representative told Cointelegraph that Grant Thornton had chosen EOS IO for its speed, user experience, and scalability. Good for EOS. Next piece of news, before Ripple, before Stellar, BitMEX, the derivatives future exchange, has lost approximately 50% of its market share over the last six months. So this is a chart of shares of open interest of Bitcoin futures per platform. And at one point, BitMEX, some people call it shitmex, was the only game in town, right? Multiple years ago. Now there's many other options if you want to trade Bitcoin futures. So what are the people choosing? Well, you can see starting up here, Bact, Bitfinex, and Kraken are the three futures platforms that people are using least. The three platforms that people are using most are OKX, BitMEX still, and Huobi, and then CME. Of course, Binance and, Binance and Bybit are uh, creeping up. But moving on, next piece of news, Stellar Lumens. Stellar XLM transactions will now all be monitored by Elliptical. So they will no longer be private. Not that XLM was a privacy coin, but it's, it's not that they won't be private. It's now they will specifically be watching every transaction, your transaction. Now, why is this? The transaction monitoring system aims to boost compliance and identify risks like money laundering, terrorist financing, and other illicit activities. So this is Stellar trying to comply with things that regulators care about, like terrorist financing, which I can definitely get behind. But the downside is the move sacrifices privacy, yet it could be attractive to institutional investors. So this is a double-edged sword, just something you should know. I guess elliptical, a lot of Bitcoiners don't really like elliptical because, I mean, elliptic. Is it elliptic? Sorry, elliptic. Elliptic. Elliptic is backed by Wells Fargo. Elliptic will be watching you. A little green flag for Ripple's XRP. Ripple's XRP sales fall to 1.75 million. This is how much the company is selling onto the market as ODL, On-Demand Liquidity Network Volume, triples. So let's find out what this means. 
All this data is from their quarterly report, a Q1 2020 XRP markets report. So check this out. The dollar value transacted using ODL, so people actually using XRP, increased by more than 294%, which is good news for token holders. Not that that means the price will go up, but it's good news with the report describing XRP liquidity as the lifeblood of Ripple's ODL for cross-border payments. Now, in my opinion, we've seen so many quarters where Ripple's volume was stagnant. Eventually, it did have to go up, and this was a good quarter for Ripple. In further good news, Ripple has again reduced the total XRP sales that the company sells from 13.08 million in Q4 of 2019 to just 13 to 1.75 million in Q1 2020. So they sold way less last quarter. The company has been criticized for propping up its balance sheet with XRP sales. And the reason that they say that they sold is the report also notes that the token was integrated into a number of additional exchanges and liquidity instruments. So what they always say, but somebody needed liquidity and they sold XRP to them. All right, that's the video. My name's Austin. See you tomorrow.